This is SportsCenter with L. Duncan and Kevin Nagandi. Welcome into SportsCenter. We're live from Torrey Pines as we'll hear from Brooks and Bryson. And it was a very long day for Tua Tungabailo. I know it's June, it's but mini camp. But some some signs there. Yeah. Dolphins mini camp. Some red flags. Plus, PTI is back. They're going to debate which one seed is in more trouble, the Jazz or Kevin's Sixers. Ugh. But we're going to start with today's headlines. As we were mentioning, as we say hello to our senior NFL insider Adam Schefter, who's joining us now, that what you couldn't see in that clip, Aaron Rodgers was wearing a shirt that said, "I'm offended." Read into it what you will, but. Shefty, what more can you tell us about the ongoing situation between Rodgers Well, it's hard to imagine that Aaron Rodgers just puts that shirt on, L without any thought. Shefty, another ongoing quarterback situation that we've been watching this offseason is Houston's Deshaun Watson. The Texas GM Nick Casario saying that a decision is coming before their training camp, which starts on July 27th. Shefty, what are you hearing about his future there? Well, what he means by that is essentially they're going to have to have a season. We've certainly heard Taylor sort of say publicly he can still play. He's still got this thing. He is more than capable. So about the Seahawks. Their mandatory minicamp started today. Their safety, Jamal Adams, is a no-show. Why? Well, it was an excuse. How they're looking for a point of reference in terms of market value. The Broncos made Justin Simmons the highest paid safety at an average of around $15.25 million a year. That won't make Jamal Adams happy. That will not make him happy. You want more than that? Oh, yes. Okay. (laughs) All right. There it is. Shefty joining us. The latest around the NFL. Gentlemen, it is official Major League Baseball. We'll start cracking down on pitchers using foreign substances starting Monday. Ejection, suspension, progressive discipline. Baseball's plan was unveiled today after months of collecting data and talking to past and present players. Commissioner Rob Manfred gave the impression as well that what pitchers are using today is very different than in the past. Here's Michelle Steele with more in the Sports Center report. So that James Harden is at the very least going to participate in warm-ups. And then as Malika Andrews just reported, the Nets will then give him the decision as to whether he's going to play. As we say hello to NBA champion K. Park, Kendrick Perkins is joining us now. If he tries and plays tonight, okay, K. Perk, what would you be looking for early on just to gauge how productive he could actually be? Well, I'm going to be looking at That's the ankle, then. He's good. Uh, and I will say, we keep hearing that sample size, right, Kevin Durant, 4-1, and one, when it's just him that plays. It's a much better sample size when at least one of the other big three plays, whether 27 and 11. I do want to talk about the Giannis side because I told you he's been eating the last couple of games. What lineup do you think is probably the most effective one for Giannis and the Bucks to utilize tonight against Brooklyn's D? Well, look, this is why we criticize Giannis. 26 of his 34 points in the paint in game fours win. We will see. Someone will take the lead tonight. K. Perk joining us here uh, to break hey, down L. a little NBA. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, we ain't never scared. Uh-oh. How about them? Uh-oh. Never. Ain't no more playing, G.A., okay? But that's for tomorrow. Uh-oh. We'll just save this tomorrow, yeah. K. Perk. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to interview him tomorrow. That's practice. It was like a nice way of saying like the Allen Iverson. It's practice. We're now joined by NFL reporter Jeff Darlington, Monday Night Football's Lewis Riddick. I'll start with you, Jeff, because You've got that Miami backdrop behind you. You were there in Miami. You were there at the practice. You saw the five interceptions. What stood out to you about Tua today? Well, I was also there for the torrential downpour. And look, it Uh, does sound like I wait with bated breath to find out. Yeah, I will. And I I think that's the point, though, right, Lewis? Like, it's not just about mini camp. I keep joking about the fact that it's a mini camp. But I think to Jeff's point and what I said earlier is it's based on the body of work that we saw last year and so many question marks that needed to be answered. What would you say is the biggest area of need in terms of improvement for Tua this year? Yeah, obviously, I think it's decision-making and it has its own story. It isn't always about just the quarterback. And Schefter, Adam Schefter pointed that out today on NFL Live. One of these interceptions bounced right off the hands, I believe it was Mike Gisecki. It was right to him. It bounced off his hands. So take it with a grain of salt. You do this, though, in September, we're going to have a problem. Yeah, the but it's tra- okay if you do it now. The training wheels are, are, are certainly off, though, right? Because not to Patino game this thing, but Ryan Fitzpatrick yeah. is no longer walking in that door in the fourth quarter to save you should you need it. So we'll see what happens. Lewis Riddick, Jeff Darlington with the latest. Sure. On a tough day for Tua. It's really just Tua bad that he threw oh that many my. interceptions, oh. Kevin. Oh. You're so yeah. He has not taken it to court. They did say they're going to try and let him test out that hamstring in anticipation of him starting game five, but he has not taken it to the court yet. And Steve Nash has no update as of now. So what we can tell you is no Kyrie. No Kyrie for sure. Kevin Durant's got to have a monster night. Yes, he is. Or this series could change just like that. Blake Griffin, you got to have a monster night. Yep. Play some defense. Who All you right. got? I got the Bucks. Okay. Next. Let's go.